against him.
Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to worship on the 13th Sunday after Pentecost. A welcome to our online community. It is good to be back. I, I am back after a bout with, uh, with the COVID, as, as they say. I've tested negative, so that's the good news. I still am, you know, uh, my, my voice I found in preaching this morning got a little uh, scratchy. So I have some water here, and I trust that I'll be able to uh, make it through the, the service uh, just fine. But uh, it, is, it is really good to be back, and it is really good to to get to, to preach again uh, this morning. Thank you to Dr. Paul Rohrm for filling in for uh, three weeks, I guess, uh, while I, I was away. And uh, today we've got an Old Testament lesson that uh, calls us to choose life. And we choose life when we choose to follow the way of God. It's really a very simple choice, but as I will say, it is not simplistic. But I'll save that message for the sermon this morning. Let us begin with our confession and forgiveness as it is found in the bulletin. I invite the congregation to please rise. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who is eager to forgive and who loves us beyond our days. Amen. Dear friends, together let us acknowledge our failure to love this world as Jesus does. God of mercy and forgiveness, we confess that sin still has a hold on us. We have harmed your good creation. We have failed to do justice, love kindness, and walk humbly with you. Turn us in a new direction. Show us the path that leads to life. Be our refuge and strength on the journey. Through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer and friend. Amen. Beloved of God, your sins are forgiven and you are made whole. God points the way to new life in Christ who meets us on the road. Journey now in God's abiding love through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. grace that is Christ's gift to us, the love of God, and the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace be with you all. And also. <coughs> in peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord <coughs> for the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord <coughs> for 
for this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise. Let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. with you and also with you let us pray direct us O lord god in all our doings with your continual help that in all our works begun continued and ended in you we may glorify your holy name and finally by your mercy bring us to everlasting life through jesus christ our savior and lord I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Lord, Lord bless the reading of your word. May it come alive in our midst. Amen. The first reading is from the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 30. See, I have set before you today life and prosperity, death and adversity. If you obey the commandments of the Lord your God that I am commanding you today by loving the Lord your God, walking in his ways, and observing his commandments, decrees, and ordinances, then you shall live and become numerous, and the Lord your God will bless you in the land that you are entering to possess. But if your heart turns away and you do not hear, but are led astray to bow down to other gods, and serve them. I declare to you today that you shall perish. You shall not live long in the land that you are crossing the Jordan to enter and possess. I call heaven and earth to witness against you today that I have set before you life and death, blessings and curses. Choose life so that you and your descendants may live loving the Lord your God, obeying him, and holding fast to him. For that means life to you and length of days, so that you may live in the land that the Lord swore to give to your ancestors, 
to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob. Word of God, word of life. We're now going to read Psalm 1 responsibly. Happy are they who have not walked in the counsel of the wicked, nor lingered in the ways of sinners, nor sat in the seats of the scornful. They are like trees planted by streams of water, bearing fruit in due season, with leaves that do not wither. Everything they do shall prosper. Therefore the wicked shall not stand upright when judgment comes, nor the sinner in the counsel of the righteous. Word of God, word of life. The Holy Gospel according to Luke, the 14th chapter. Glory to you, Lord. Now large crowds were traveling with Jesus, and he turned and said to them, Whoever comes to me and does not hate father and mother, wife and children, brothers and sisters, yes, and even life itself, cannot be my disciple. Whoever does not carry the cross and follow me cannot be my disciple. For which of you, intending to build a tower, does not first sit down and estimate the cost to see whether he has enough to complete it. Otherwise, when he has laid a foundation and is not able to finish, all who see it will begin to ridicule him, saying, this fellow began to build and was not able to finish. Or what king going out to wage war against another king will not sit down first and consider whether he is able, with 10,000, to oppose the one who comes against him with 20,000. If he cannot, then, while the other is still far away, he sends a delegation and asks for the terms of peace. So therefore, none of you can become my disciple if you do not give up all of your possessions. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. taken by that first lesson today from Deuteronomy. I call heaven and earth to witness against you today that I have set before you life and death, blessings and curses. Choose life so that you and your descendants may live. Friends, grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and our Lord and our Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Life is about making choices. We make good choices. We make bad choices. And of course, the good news of the gospel is that even after a bad choice, God does not abandon us. As Lutherans, we know that we are saved by grace and not through the works of the law And the people can say amen to that. Amen, indeed. And yet, we still have to live with the repercussion of making a bad choice. Death and adversity, according to the Old Testament lesson this morning. Some might call that divine punishment. But I say that the suffering that results from a bad choice is not God punishing you. It is simply what happens when you make a bad choice, the natural consequence. I have to admit that I'm watching a little too much TV during the pandemic. 
with this streaming now and I can watch foreign shows and there's no advertisements. And so I'm always looking for a new show. And so on vacation, my brother suggested Breaking Bad. <laughs> he said it's a little raw, but very good. Have you seen Breaking Bad, Doug? Oh, yeah. <laughs> good show. A little raw. <laughs> not a little raw. Very raw. I don't recommend it. That's not good for the pastor to be talking about this show. But what I am so intrigued by in this show is that it's all about making choices, blatant choices, and the consequence of a bad choice. The title character is a guy by the name of Walter. He's 50 years old. He um, is a high school chemistry teacher to students who do not want to learn, <coughs> have to work at a car wash, to make ends meet. He has a special needs child, which is, uh, you know, takes a, a, so some effort. His marriage isn't great. And by the way, he has just received a cancer diagnosis. Life is hard. But Walter has a brother in law who is a drug enforcement agent. And this agent, uh, uh, talks about the tens of thousands of dollars that they confiscate on drug raids, and Walter takes note. And I just watched the first couple of episodes, and in the first episode, through a convoluted set of circumstances, Walter decides that the answer to his hard life is to set up a meth lab with his knowledge of chemistry, and he starts selling meth crystals. He becomes a drug dealer. <coughs> Easy money, but a bad choice. Hence the name of the series, Breaking Bad. As I watched this show this week and read Deuteronomy 30, I thought, if only Walter could have read Deuteronomy 30 before choosing his life of crime. Traditionally, this text is known as the farewell speech of Moses. Moses has led Israel <coughs> through the uh, promise, through the wilderness, and they're, they're at the cusp of the promised land. And these are his, his words before he leaves. And the words are a choice. It's all about making a choice. You can choose life and prosperity or death and adversity. Life and prosperity is the choice of obeying the Ten Commandments. <coughs> Loving the Lord your God, walking in his ways, and observing his commandments, decrees, and ordinances if this is the life you choose, then you shall live and become numerous. But if the people choose not to obey, Moses says, you will die. But if your heart turns away and you do not hear, but are led astray to bow down to other gods and serve them, I declare to you today that you shall Seems like a very simple choice, doesn't it? Life and prosperity, or death and adversity. But it is not a simplistic choice. Because choosing the way of God is choosing the more difficult path. Just read the Gospel this morning. <laughs> Jesus says, if you want to be my disciples, you know, you have to hate father and mother, and that's the word, by the way, hate. There's, there's no uh, softening this word. Hate father and mother, wife, children, brothers and sisters, and even life itself cannot be my disciple. <clears throat> A little bit of hyperbole here, okay? <coughs> I don't think that Jesus is calling us to hate. 
The cross is about love, right? But Jesus is making a point. And that point, he's speaking to the large crowd, by the way. It's not the inner circle here. It's the large crowd, and Jesus feels, you know, I really have to, you know, share what it's about. And this life of bearing the cross, this life of following the way of God, it will entail opposition. And maybe that opposition will come from your very own family. And so, Jesus says, you better count the cost of what it means to follow me. Moses makes it sound simple this morning to choose life and prosperity, (coughs) but at what cost? I keep thinking of, of poor Walter. He counted the cost and felt it was too much. And so he chose the easy way out. And what I am so struck by in the show is that he makes the choice alone. He doesn't even tell his wife about his cancer diagnosis. He doesn't go to the principal and talk about his unruly class. He doesn't seek out any friends to help him choose how to respond to his hard life. Again, if only he would have read Deuteronomy 30, because this is a text that is all about relationships. It's all about living in community. It's all about living in relationship with God. That's what the Ten Commandments are, right? How do we live in relationship with God? Well, we put God first. I am the Lord your God. You shall have no other gods. Do not take the name of the Lord your God in vain, and remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Something we are doing right in this very minute. That's how we relate to God. How do we relate to the community? Well, we honor our father and mother. We don't hate our father and mother. We honor our father and mother. We do not kill. We do not commit adultery. We do not steal. We do not bear false witness. And we do not covet. Sometimes we think of the Ten Commandments as being a burden. They are not a burden. They are just simply showing us how to live. (coughs) How to live in relationships. Life and prosperity, therefore, are not found outside of ourselves. Life and prosperity are found when we can break free of ourselves and we can find the true joy of family, community, and living in relationship with God. And so we make decisions together with one another. Think of the bad choices you've made in your life. How many of those choices were made alone? If I look back at my life, (laughs) most of the time when it's been the wrong choice, it's been something that I have chosen all alone. Community, family, relationships, all surround the Old Testament reading this morning. And I think it's important to understand that Moses is not coming to the people as an outsider today. And God does not come as an outsider. God, remember, has led people through, uh, out, of, out of slavery and through the wilderness. And so God says, as you start this new chapter, live <clears throat> in relationship with one another. And I think this is in direct counter when we hear that word prosperity to what is known as the prosperity gospel. Have you heard about that? There are a number of Christian preachers who, who, who preach, you know, obey God and become wealthy, become rich, which is a misreading of scriptures, right? I mean, God sides with the poor. And this life and prosperity, again, is not to, 
to lift me up in, in, in wealth, it is to lift up the community. Take a look again at verse 19. <clears throat> God says, choose life so that you and your descendants might live. Prosperity is not wealth. If it was, then Walter made the right choice. Prosperity <clears throat> is so that our descendants may live. Good choices are made on behalf of others. Good choices are made on behalf of our children. Good choices are made on behalf of future generations. Matt Skinner, I, I, he's a professor at Luther Seminary. I listen to him every week on Working Preacher. And he said this week that this is a call for the church to embody good choices. He says the state cannot legislate good choices as hard as it tries. He says that good choices will never be seen as being hip or cool. Good choices will flow against the tide of culture. Good choices don't go for the easy money. And good choices don't choose the easy way out. Yes, life and prosperity is a simple choice. But it is not simplistic. And so today, as we choose to be in but not of the world, as we choose to bear the cross, as we choose God and life, we choose to obey the commandments, we choose self-sacrifice, we choose to welcome the stranger, we choose to love unconditionally even when it's not popular. Matt Skinner calls the church to embody good choices so that in our own weird way, we then witness to life and prosperity, the life that God intends for God's people.
choose to bear the cross, we confess our faith through the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born in the Virgin Mary, suffered in the conscious Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. And he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. As scattered grains of wheat are gathered together into one bread, so let us gather our prayers for the church, those in need, and all of God's good creation. God of creation, you show us the way to prosperity and life. Help us choose life as we love the Lord our God, walking in your ways and observing your commandments, decrees, and ordinances. God of grace, hear our prayer. The choice of life and prosperity is simple but not simplistic. It is hard to bear the cross and love the world as you love us. Strengthen us for this task. Equip us to show up in the world, but be not of the world. Help us to bear the cross even when it is not the easy choice. God of grace. Hear our prayer. On this Labor Day weekend, we pray for safe and equitable working conditions for all people. Bless our vocations that our work may be a blessing to others. God of grace. Hear our prayer. For all in need, for those who suffer from disease, who struggle with homelessness or food insecurity, for those whose family life is difficult, and for all in this community who need your care, may your healing hand rest upon them. We name this day Audrey, Carol, Claire, Ed, Ella, Gary, Gwenda, we name all on our prayer list, and those now especially we name before you who are most special to us. God of grace, hear our prayer. we give thanks for the saints who now rest from their labors. Give us faith like them to love you with all our hearts. <clears throat> And by your mercy, bring us to everlasting life. We name this day the family and friends of Lucille Smith, as we also name the saints of our lives. God of grace, hear our prayer. Gather together in the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit. Gracious God, we offer these prayers and all our prayers to you, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. <coughs> Amen. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. With you. We extend God's peace to one another this day. Daniel, yes.
gracious God, in your great love, you richly provide for our needs. Make of these gifts of bank, a banquet of blessing, and make us ready to share with all in need. Through Jesus Christ, who sets the table for all. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so, with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the host of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. God, mighty Lord, gracious Father, endless is your mercy and eternal your reign. You have filled all creation with light and life. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. We praise you for the grace shown to your people in every age, the promise to Israel, the rescue from Egypt, the gift of the promised land, the words of the prophets, and at this end of all the ages, the gift of your Son who proclaimed the good news in word and deed and was obedient to your will even to giving his life. The night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. For as often as we eat of this bread and drink from this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Therefore, O oh God, with this bread and cup, we remember the life our Lord offered for us, and believing the witness of his resurrection, we await his coming in power to share with us the great and promised feast. <coughs> Lord Jesus. Send now, we pray, your Holy Spirit, that we who share in Christ's body and blood may live to the praise of your glory and receive our inheritance with all your saints in light. Amen. <coughs> Join our prayers with those of your servants of every time and every place, and unite them with the ceaseless petitions of our great high priest until he comes as victorious Lord of all. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from time of trial and deliver us from evil. The kingdom, power, and glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Christ invites you to this table. Come, taste, and seek. Amen. Amen.
Please rise. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in God's grace. Amen. And God of the abundant table, you have refreshed our hearts in this meal with bread for the journey. Give us your grace on the road that we might serve our neighbors with joy for the sake of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And please be seated. Well, good morning and welcome to worship today. It's good to be and back. back. And well, thank you. Yeah, it's been about a month, I, I figured, so between vacation and then. Thankfully, I got sick after I got home. <laughs> but anyway, it's good to be back. I want to introduce to you today our field ed student for this new academic year, uh, Daniel Marone. Daniel, you want to stand up and take a bow? Uh, <laughs> you'll, be, you'll be hearing uh, more about uh, Daniel, and he'll be hearing more about us. And so welcome, Daniel. It's great to have you uh, for, uh, for this year at, at, at Prince of Peace. Uh, looking uh, ahead, choir begins on Thursday, and bell choir, any, any word, Doug, uh, to the congregation? Uh, if you are planning on coming, let me know. Okay. Bell start at 7, uh, and then choir at, at 8. Okay. Uh, I'll give the audition. <laughs> yeah, no, no auditions. Uh, everybody come and, and sing and join the join the join the joy. Huh? Um, two weeks from yesterday, Brandy Hebert, a member of our congregation, is being ordained into the Lutheran Church. Uh, Brandy has been serving at God's Love Lutheran Church in Newtown, Pennsylvania and has been called to that congregation and will be ordained uh, in, uh, well, a week from this coming Saturday. The choir, we're going to have a combined choir between Prince of Peace and uh, God's Love, so I just want to make that invitation. 10 o'clock, Saturday, September 17th, at God's Love Lutheran Church. Next Sunday, and we've been a little bit uh, behind in terms of uh, publicizing this, uh, but God's work, our hands day. You know, traditionally that Sunday after Labor Day is, uh, we used to call it rally day, but I, I don't really, you know, we're not rallying, we're, we're just, we're just uh, serving God. And, and we're going to go to St. Bart's, and we're going to build, and there's an uh, uh, announcement in the bulletin about it, flower or garden beds, not necessarily flower beds, but those wooden, you know, small garden uh, beds. And lowest case has been instrumental in planning this. So what we're going to do is leave right after this service and, and go down to St. Bart's. So I would encourage you to wear your T-shirts. Do we have extra T-shirts, yes. by the way, Joan? Yes. God's work, our hands, they're bright yellow yep. um, with, our, with, with, with the name of our church. I had mine on yesterday at St. Bart's uh, uh, as I grilled burgers. For, uh, <laughs> I smell like a hamburger, I think, still. Uh, but I had it on. It's a great way, and it's a, it's a great fellowship event. We'll have a lunch uh, for you. Uh, let me know if, if you want to join us. I think it's a great opportunity. I mean, you hear so much about St. Bart's, but maybe you go, well, I don't, I, don't, I don't know if I want to uh, go there, but you, we can come together. It's a, it's a, a great uh, uh, church, a great neighborhood, uh, and these flower beds are going to go, or I keep saying flower beds, garden beds, are going to go in the courtyard between the church and the parsonage, if you are familiar with uh, St. Bart's. And, and then also they have a Head Start program, and so the Head Start will be using these, the children will be using these garden beds. So I think it's a great project. It's all going to be planned out. You just have to show up uh, and maybe get your hands a little dirty, which is the whole point of God's work, our hands. So that's next Sunday. I'll send out an email this week. Uh, but if you could let us know, just so we have an idea of how many are coming <clears throat> and, you know, how we can make preparations for lunch, that all-important food <laughs> element to anything we do at church. Uh, other announcements. Dave has the, uh, Dave, uh, Roberta has an announcement. Uh, we have the mic for our folks online.
Yes. yes. And so are the folks at St. Bart's and the kids who received them. Thank you, Roberta. Yes, it was great to be a part of the actual distribution and to have the children from the neighborhood. They had over 200 backpacks, and they were distributed uh, to the children who start school this week. So thank you. Thank you, Roberta. Any other announcements? Oh, one other. Uh, two weeks from today, we begin Joyful Noise. Joyful Noise, there's a, 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 a page on it. Uh, in the bulletin. Uh, it is a worship service that will be held once a month, uh, beginning at 1 o'clock in the afternoon, and it is a service appropriate to children with uh, special needs and their families, but it is not reserved for those. Anybody can come, and we're hoping that, that people will be a part. It will be a word and sacrament. The sermon will be the same sermon that I preach in the morning, maybe a little bit shorter, uh, but it is, a, it is another option of, of worship. So we want to uh, promote that. If you know of uh, families that you feel might benefit from this, it's wide open. You know, it's, you don't have to be Lutheran. Um, uh, it's intended for, for, for all people. So that will happen the third Sunday of the month. September 18th will be the first Joyful Noise service at Prince of Peace. Okay, I think, I think that's it. So let us rise for the benediction. God who gives life to all things and frees us from despair, bless you with truth and peace. And may the Holy Trinity, one God, guide you always in faith, hope, and love. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.